with ICSC Chemistry Board Examination 2024 just tomorrow. I think it will be a good idea to go through the most important questions in chemistry. I have some papers over here and I'm going to take some questions. Let us see how we can have different types of questions solved so that you can get full marks for your 2024 chemistry board examination. Now the type that you can get is number one is right balanced chemical equation. Now in balanced chemical equation organic chemistry sometimes can be challenging. Let us look at the first reaction ethene from bromoethane. So we have ethene to be prepared from bromoethane. So we will write structure wise this will be here Br and then we'll have all these H's and then we'll have to add something so that we get ethene. Eth means two carbons and that will give us double bond between the carbons. We do not want this H and Br. So we will add alcoholic KOH and boil. So K will take Br, it will give us KBr and OH will take H and that will give us H2O. This H and Br has been removed with these electrons going here to form the double bond. So you can now complete the reaction even structure wise like this. And that gave us ethene from ethyl bromide. The second one over here is methane from sodium acetate. Acetic acid is CH3COOH but sodium acetate means sodium will replace that H. Now we want the condition to be written over here is soda lime and heat. So we will have Na2CO3 formed and this H goes with that. So you will have Na2CO3 plus CH4 which is methane. This is the carboxylation reaction. Now sometimes they can ask even the type of reaction. This was dehydrohalogenation and this is decarboxylation. Let us come to the third one, ethyne using calcium carbide. Now calcium carbide, this also I like to show with the structure. This is calcium carbide with HOH and HOH. So this is how we will get our ethyne. Show the arrow and write structure wise. You will never go wrong with the structures. And the, this over here CaOH twice we write here. Okay, so this is your ethyne and this is your calcium carbide. So these were some of the examples of organic chemistry reactions. Practice these. The other type of reaction questions that they can ask is this type. So they will give you like a framework here. NaCO3 becomes NaCl, write the full reaction. So you have to write the whole reaction, balance it and get your one mark. Each one of these is a one mark question. Make sure that you write the conditions. Now let us look at the thinking behind it. So our first one says number one, we have been given NaHCO3. And from that we have to get NaCl. Now Na will come from here. So for this Cl, I will use dilute acid property of hydrochloric acid. And I will have double decomposition giving me this. I'll get NaCl and H2CO3. Now you know H2CO3 is a weak acid and we have to write H2O plus CO2. This is your H2CO3. And this will give us our reaction 1. Now let us come to the second reaction. Second reaction says you take that NaCl and you have to prepare NaH. SO4. Now there are two ways of doing this. Either I can write H2SO4 dilute and I can take it in excess and that will give me acid salt with 
partial double decomposition happening. Okay, and that will give me NaHSO4 and HCl. The other method is I'll take NaCl and you know the lab preparation. So H2SO4 conch will give us with temperature less than 200 degrees C and it will give us again half double decomposition here. So that will give us NaHSO4 plus HCl. If you write a dilute, then you have to take excess of acid to get that acid salt. If you take Kong, then this condition is important. So be very careful because you are learning this very nicely. You still have time in hand. Prepare everything nicely. Let us come to reaction B. You take sulfur and you have to prepare H2SO4. Now sulfur with H2SO4 is oxidized product and this is the property of HNO3 concentrated where it is a very good oxidizing agent and we have S becoming H2SO4 and with conch HNO3 we always have a package deal of H2O plus NO2. You must remember this reaction actually it's very simple. If you remember these coefficients, it's a very easy reaction. Okay, let us come to this being third. Let us come to the fourth reaction. We have to take H2SO4 and you have to prepare HNO3. Now for HNO3, your H will come from here. So NO3 will have to come from some nitrate. So we can take KNO3 or we can take NaNO3, sodium or potassium nitrate. But here we will have conk H2SO4 and it will be less than 200 degrees C. And that will give us NaHSO4 is going to be half DD like this. So it will be NaHSO4 and HNO3 will be this H and this NO3. This is the lab preparation of HNO3 reaction. I'm sure all of you know the lab preparation of all the compounds. Make sure that you remember even the conditions. Let's come to C. Your C reaction is the fifth one which says take C2H4 that is ethene and prepare C2H4. 5BR. Now what has been added to this H and BR? So if I add HBR, I will get C2H5BR. It's an addition reaction. Okay, let us come to the sixth one. Sixth one says C2H5BR and prepare C2H6. Now, if I want to prepare the alkane, I do not want this Br here. I have to take out this Br here and I need one H added to this. So, I have to take two nascent hydrogen. I need nascent hydrogen to be added to this and that is possible with ZnCu couple in alcohol. And that will give us one H will be given to this. That will become C2H6 and H will take Br the other one and you'll get HBr. So this is the method by which from alkyl halides we will prepare alkane. Okay, so these are some of the questions where they are going to use the chemical reactions and they can ask you as I told you earlier how it is to be done. The first one, this is the second kind of question based on reaction. The next important question in chemistry class 10 ICC 2024 is going to be the IUPAC names and the structural formula of organic compounds. Say for example, let's take this question. This is one of the prelim papers that I got this question from. In order to write the IUPAC name, I must have the longest chain. The longest chain has 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is butte. 
I have for the second carbon, I have OH. I have to start counting from the functional group. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 as the numbering. The second one has got functional group and second one has got this methyl group. So you look at the four carbons, we write but all single bonds here, so it becomes butane, but the second carbon has got hydroxyl group, that is alcoholic group, so we write OL, and here for the second one we have methyl, so we write 2-methyl, butane 2-ol. Let us look at the second one. Again, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is butte. And this butte has got for the second carbon a double bond. So it is butte to ene. But for the second carbon, it's got chlorine. So it becomes 2 chloro butte to ene. So this is our first answer. This is a second answer. Let us look at another question. This one says draw the structural formula for 1, 2, 4 trimethyl pentane. So pentane means I have to have 5 carbons. So C single bond, C single bond, C single bond, C single bond, C. A means all single bonds. If I start with this as first one, this will be second, then third, then fourth, and then fifth carbon. You can count from here also this way, not a problem. But whatever you decide, you stick to that numbering only. Two, two, four. So second carbon and second carbon. So two methyl groups are for the second carbon. So here it will be CH3 group and here they will be CH3 group. Got that? And the fourth one also has a CH3 group. So we can have all these carbons with these HHH. And then we have this H, this H, this H. This carbon will have these two H's. This carbon will have this H. This carbon will have these three H's. The last carbon will have these H's. So make sure that each carbon has four valencies. And here, I don't have place, but here above this, you will write one H. Okay, so this was a first structure. B part, 4 methyl pentane to all. So pent means again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. A means all single bonds. And the second one, second one has this oil, means it has OH. So I will start counting from here. So I'll write here OH. You want to one small bond between H and O also not a problem. So this is first carbon, second carbon, third and fourth. So fourth carbon will have a methyl group means CH3. Once you decided on this double check, two all and four methyl. Now each one of these carbons will have four valencies to be shown and each one will be with H. Got that? Let us come again to the IPAC names. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is a butte and the first carbon has I. So it is but one ion. Ion means the triple bond here. There is no other branch, no alkyl group or no other functional group. Let us look at this. One, two, three. So it is prop. 
single bonds here so it is ale and this is COOH this is the functional group so it becomes proper noic acid let us look at this last one look at the functional group first then count the carbons how many carbons two so it is eth single bond means in and aldehyde group so it becomes al tell me if you are finding this useful important question in chemistry is give the chemical test to distinguish between the following pairs of compounds you will be given two compounds and they will tell you either use this test with sodium hydroxide or you have to decide on your own here they have made it simpler for you sodium hydroxide use and distinguish between zinc cation and calcium cation the second one is manganese dioxide and copper 2 oxide using concentrated hcl and the last one is dilute hydrochloric acid and dilute sulfuric acid using lead nitrate solutions now supposing they did not tell you that use sodium hydroxide solution you could have even used for zinc and calcium you could have used ammonium hydroxide solution where calcium would not give any precipitate but zinc will give gelatinous white precipitate but here they have given sodium hydroxide so we'll write with that the second one is manganese dioxide and copper 2 oxide here it's very simple you have to use concentrated hydrochloric acid there is no choice about that but for the third one if they did not tell you lead nitrate solution then you could have used barium chloride solution to distinguish between these two barium chloride because hydrochloric acid will not react with it will show no change but barium chloride with sulfuric acid will give baso4 which is an insoluble precipitate so let us see how we write down these tests we write our first answer like this by making three columns add naoh solution drop wise and then in excess if gelatinous white precipitate which is soluble in excess of naoh is formed then zn2 plus is present and therefore zinc nitrate solution is present for calcium if milky white precipitate which is insoluble in excess of NaOH then Ca2+ plus, that is calcium nitrate is present for the second one we again make the three columns and we write MnO2 here CuO here and we add concentrated hydrochloric acid how it is mentioned here the same way we will write and we have to heat now this is an oxidizing agent is going to oxidize hcl forming chlorine gas so our observation will be if greenish yellow gas with pungent smell that is chlorine liberated then fno2 present you could also say which turns moist blue litmus red and bleaches it to clear colorless i don't have space you could write it that way and we come to cuo if no greenish yellow gas liberated because obviously cuo is not an oxidizing agent but this is an acid and this is a base so you'll get salt and water and cucl2 will be formed which will be blue in color so we say that the solution becomes blue then cuo is present we come to the last one we again make the three columns we write dilute hcl and dilute h2so4 and use lead nitrate solution the way they have told but remember lead nitrate is going to form lead chloride here and lead sulfate here and both of them are chalky white precipitate but lead chloride will be soluble on heating so we say add this and heat and this is the important part so the chalky white precipitate of pbcl2 will dissolve on heating that means cl1 minus was present in this compound 
so it becomes dilute HCl and here chalkivite precipitate which does not dissolve on heating then it is SO4 2 minus present that means H2SO4 dilute is present. Let us see the next popular and most important question in chemistry class 10 ICC 2024 board exams. If you are finding this useful write in the comment thumbs up or send some heart or even any emoji that is making you happy about it. The next type of question is give one word for the following. Now you have to prepare this learning all the definitions. The definitions are important especially like mole concept and also in metallurgy different definitions that are there you must know them thoroughly okay let us look at this a a process of heating the concentrated ore at high temperatures in presence of air in presence of air becomes roasting and not calcination so know the difference between roasting and calcination the process of dressing the ore which involves separation of the ore and gang by preferential wetting is froth flotation. Method The tendency of the element to form chains of identical atoms is catenation and this is the term from organic chemistry. The amount of substance which contains same number of units as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 is a mole of a substance. Acids containing hydrogen and a non-metallic element other than oxygen which means it will be like HI or HBr or HCl these are called as hydracids against oxy acids so this is from acid bases and salt terms remember the different definition like monobasic acid dibasic acid okay and also uh, monoacidic base acid salt new, uh, normal salt complex salt basic salt all these definitions can come in the this type of question okay another most important question in chemistry class in icac 2024 board examination is identify the cation this is from analytical chemistry where we talk about the tests with sodium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide and the flame test now pqrs are four salts given a says the flame test with salt P gives crimson red flame and that is the test for calcium ion so that is your calcium cation remember the other colors also sodium is persistent golden yellow Potassium is non-persistent lilac color. Okay, so then you have to know all those by heart. Dirty green precipitate with the addition of ammonium hydroxide. So Q must be having Fe2 plus. So you will write over here iron 2, 2 plus. Either you write like this or you can write like this or you can say ferrous ion. Nitrate R on heating gives buff yellow residue means PBO which fuses with the glass. So this nitrate must be having lead 2. So it is PB2 plus. So you will write over here lead ion. The salt solution S on reaction with sodium hydroxide produces a white precipitate but 
produces no precipitate with ammonium hydroxide. So this must be calcium again because calcium ion needs high concentration of OH1 minus ions. So know your practical chemistry well, know all the cations how to identify. So this again is another important type of question. Another one of most important questions in chemistry for ICC 2024 board exam is fill in the blanks. It's an easy one, but yet it's an important question. Let's look at one of the examples. Conversion of ethanol to ethene, which I solved in the earlier part of this video. Ethanol to ethene, that H and OH is going to be removed. So it is the example of dehydration. When NaCl is heated with conch H2SO4 below 200 degrees C, I will get NaH, SO4 and HCl. This is the lab preparation of hydrogen chloride. The products formed is sodium hydrogen sulfate. This is the one. Excess ammonia reacts with chlorine. Now excess ammonia will be 8 NH3 plus 3 Cl2 gives 6 NH4 Cl plus N2. So it will form nitrogen. Actually they should have given you NCl3 as one of the products also because with excess chlorine ammonia forms this. So you need to know when ammonia is in excess what are the products and if chlorine is in excess which are the products. Substitution reactions are characteristics of alkene, alkyne, alkene, alkanes. It will be alkanes where there are no free electrons available for, for the reaction. So this is the option. In period 3, most metallic element will be from group 1A and period 3 starts with sodium. Where is sodium? Here. So that is how we have to think. All right, go guided by all the keywords in the question and then answer properly and correctly. Okay, last but not the least, let us come to the mole concept and stoichiometry where the numericals will be asked. Let's look at those questions also. We now come to the most dreaded part of the chemistry board examination of ICAC. A whole lot of children get confused for the numericals. This one is based on empirical formula, molecular formula. And of course, we have lots of calculations. Some of the times, the, cans, the calculations are going to be a little hectic. They are going to be challenging. But let us see how we can effectively solve these questions, still getting full marks. Okay, let's look at this question. The empirical formula and the molecular formula of an organic compound from the data given below. Carbon is 75.92%, hydrogen is 6.32%, nitrogen is 17.76% and vapor density of the compound is 39.5% and these are the atomic weights given of carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen. We have to make the columns and then we have to go for the calculations. I'll just tell you how this is to be done. Watch on. We make the columns here the way your teachers taught you or the way the book is telling you. We have the first column of elements. We write this carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen percentage is the way it is given in the uh, question atomic weights are given relative number of atoms we have to divide percentage by atomic weight that gives us 6.33 here it will be divided by 1 like so 6.32 and 17.76 divided by 14 I've shown the calculations here it will be 1.27 or you can have 1.2 6 and whatever the next digit is, it's going to round it off to 7. Then we have to take the simple whole number ratio. So both of these numbers will be divided by the least. And so we'll have 6.33 
divided by 1.27 and this is 1.27 and 1.27 here okay i have shown the division over here 4.98 approximately is 5 4.98 approximately is 5 and then this is 1 so empirical formula is C5H5N. Next step is to find empirical formula weight. So carbon is 12. So 5 into 12 that's 60. Then 1 into 5. So that is 5. That is 65 plus 14. So that's 79. Vapor density has been given as 39.5. Molecular weight will be 2 into vapor density that is 79 and then n equal to molecular weight upon empirical formula weight that is 79 upon 79 which is equal to 1 and then the molecular formula is C5H5N okay that is 1 multiplied by this so this is our empirical formula and this is a molecular formula let's look at another type of question which will be based on chemical equation now. Yet another type of most important question is going to be from stoichiometry and that is our chemical equation. So we have been given a chemical equation and from this we have to find out mass of copper needed to react with 63 grams of nitric acid and volume of nitric oxide collected at the same time and we have been given copper as 64, hydrogen as 1, nitrogen as 14 and oxygen as 16. So we first write the reaction and we write what is given. We have been given this. Can you see that? So we write that. And we are asked mass of copper. So I am writing on copper here above mass equal to question mark. Okay. And for the second part volume of nitric oxide I will write here volume equal to how much. So this is our first question second sub, uh, second sub part. Now in order to solve this if the mass has been given I have to find the GMM of HNO3. So GMM of HNO3 H is 1, N is 14, O3 means 63 is 48. You add it up you get 63 grams. So 8 multiplied by 63 is what is in the reaction and in the reaction 3 atoms of copper each copper is 64 gram so 3 into 64 has been given. So we make the two columns where the known quantity is that will be our first column unknown quantity becomes our second column. So 8 into 63 is what is given with the chemical equation giving copper as 3 into 64. So if it is 63 gram here HNO3 then how much would be our mass of copper. So we take the numbers across we multiply like so divide by the third like so 63 63 gets cancelled 8 once 8 8 so 3 into 8 is 24 grams so mass of copper is 24 gram and that is our answer 1. For the second part we keep the same quantity as our first column that is mass of HNO3 but the second quantity will be here this one will come here. So 8 into 63 gram gives you 2 into 22.4 liters can you see this 2 moles means 2 into 22.4 liters at STP because one mole has volume 22.4 liters at STP. Take the numbers across and multiply, divide by the third quantity and as you can see from the cancellation 22.4 upon 4 that is volume of uh, N, not NO2 and that is 5.6 liters at STP and that is our answer 2. We have practically finished, we practically have finished all the different important question types in chemistry of class 10 ICSC 2024 board examination. Now this is another question which I wanted to solve. 
but I think you have understood how to do this. The percentage compositions are given, you will make the columns and the atomic weights are given. They are just asking you to find empirical formula work up to one decimal place they are telling you. So solve this on your own and write in the comment box what is the empirical formula of this compound. Basically, all of you should now practice more of these types of questions which are frequently asked and I wish you all the best for your ICSC 2024 board examination of chemistry which is tomorrow. All the best, do everything nicely, wisely, correctly and get full marks. Bye.